Well, uh, Mike, for most of this, it has been relatively calm, as a pursuit can be calm. But uh, when he got on westbound 270 from the 170 inner belt, he got on to Dunn Road. And I was uh, telling uh, Jasmine on Fox 2 that, you know, Dunn Road's kind of like an outer road for 270 up in the North County area. Well, there were construction barrels there and there was a lot of traffic and he went down the side of the road coming very close to clipping some cars and uh, then he cut in front of a semi truck and a car jumped into the median area and back on to 270 westbound from there so at that point he kind of escalated things and uh, we're seeing these police cars and I'll back out a little bit to show you uh, closing in on him staying a little tighter a little closer and now at this point here his speeds are really, uh, he's up into the 85, uh, 90 mile an hour range. Yeah, Mike, it is, and, and one of the problems is now is he is escalating this. John tells me now that we're up over 95 miles an hour as we're going uh, down the highway here, and we're getting into a fairly populated area. So, again, I suspect these police cars, if they can get themselves a, an area, a fairly clear area, will tighten up and try and terminate this pursuit. Yeah, that's true, Mike. Too. Also, if they can get it more to the right, you know, there's a better chance there's a police officer there. He would probably had spike strips, but apparently this guy knows not to get into that right lane when you see a police car on the side because they, they will deploy those spike strips. Yeah, Mike, and he just uh, made it appear that he was going to get off at Ledoux Road, got partway down the exit ramp, and then cut all the way over to the left, due, uh, to the left and back onto the highway trying to evade these police. So he is definitely uh, raising his game here, uh, for lack of better words, and this uh, situation is getting more dangerous by the minute.
Well, we got him on Broadway, uh, just north of downtown, just a little north of the dome. We picked him up there around Washington Avenue and uh, Broadway and have been following him ever since. Uh, westbound on 70, he went to the 170 inner belt, went north there, got back on uh, 270 here, and is it westbound or is now southbound as you get into this West County area. And uh, this has been going on a long time, Mike. This is a long one for the city of St. Louis and this area. Yeah, I would, yeah, uh, it looks like that's, yeah, that's apparently where we are. I have to zoom out sometimes, Mike, because I get a little lost hanging onto the camera. That's Manchester there, Mike. Right there. much, much more dangerous, obviously, going through uh, these construction zones when you're kind of desperate. And he has shown himself to be a little desperate at this point with a couple of the moves he's made and the speeds that he's going. Yeah. We're coming up on Big Ben right now, Mike. Forty four westbound, Mike.
Yeah, that brings up the point that I was just thinking about, Mike, that at some point you got to wonder with this older model Cadillac, large car, you know, running at high speeds up and down these highways, uh, you know, how much gas does this thing have at this point? And that may be the tactic, uh, you know, that the police are using right now. They may just try and stay with them and let them run out of gas. Yes. Yes, exactly, Mike. And then this is where uh, that should be Bowles right there, I believe. And we're coming up on where the old Chrysler plant used to be. And then a little farther west of that would be the uh, Merits Corporation. Back on the highway. Yeah, it's hard to tell, Mike. It does appear to, you know, it's hard with the tinting on the back windows, but it does appear to just be him. Yeah, and as you can see, there is still traffic coming westbound uh, on this road. I believe we're uh, well, actually northbound. I think we're northbound, so those would be southbound drivers. Uh, but they, uh, you know, they still have that civilian traffic coming at them, so they are being very careful, and they've been extremely patient through this whole thing. Uh, it, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, Mike, because we have had to elevate a little. I believe it is. I believe that's part of the vinyl top that's just kind of uh, torn off and uh, raggedy laying on there. So I think that's what that is. But I do think that rear window's intact. Oh, easily. Yeah, it is. It might be some kind of uh, composite aluminum wheel or something. I'm not sure. There we go. Another police car zooming past. I think one of the reasons, too, for these police cars going past him, Mike, might be uh, that they want to answer the same question that you and I had, and that is, is someone else in the vehicle with him? And I think that's uh, also one of the reasons they do that, to try and establish how many people are in the vehicle, especially with those very dark tinted windows. Yeah, that's exactly where we are, Mike. And I will tell you, when they go in the wrong lane, okay, look out here. Now he is definitely going the wrong way in traffic. This is usually 
will uh, cause the police to expedite going off the road now. This might be uh, just about the end of that. You can see smoke coming from the right front, maybe the engine overheating. Uh, there he has, now he's wrecked the car. He's about to get out and looks as though he's gonna run. Too late, one police officer has him in custody. Yeah, and Mike, I mean, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but he did not appear...